Hi everyone, this is Nurse Ryan, and today we're going to be talking about the drug dexamethasone, also known by the brand names Decadron, Dexazone, and more. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. Dexamethasone belongs to the corticosteroid drug classification. To understand specifically how dexamethasone works, let's first review what corticosteroids are and how they work in general. So corticosteroids are types of steroids that are produced in the adrenal glands, which are the glands that sit right above the kidneys. To be specific, corticosteroids are produced in the adrenal cortex, which is in the outer region of the adrenal gland. There are two main classes of corticosteroids that are produced by the adrenal cortex, which are the glucocorticoids and the mineralocorticoids, which each have their own effects in the body. Glucocorticoids get their name from their important role in glucose metabolism. Glucocorticoids increase gluconeogenesis, which is the increase in the production of glucose, primarily in the liver. This can lead to higher blood glucose levels. Glucocorticoids are also important in the immune system by influencing inflammation. Think about whenever you've had some kind of injury, like a cut, a sprained ankle, maybe an infection, you've probably seen swelling or inflammation in and around the affected area. Inflammation happens when there is damage to the cells in your body. Inflammation is actually a protective response from your immune system, even if it is at times painful. Inflammation helps bring more white blood cells, antibodies, and other helpful things to the affected area to help treat the problem. Glucocorticoids, however, reduce inflammation and reduce the immune system response. So glucocorticoids are anti-inflammatories and immunosuppressants. So how specifically do glucocorticoids work to reduce inflammation? It's by blocking the messengers that cause inflammation. These messengers are sometimes called inflammatory mediators, and they include things like prostaglandins and leukotrienes. If we block these inflammatory mediators, we get less inflammation and the immune system doesn't respond as quickly. So one last time, glucocorticoids increase the production of glucose, decrease inflammation, and decrease the immune system response. Glucocorticoids do have many other functions, but these are the important basics. Mineralocorticoids are important for water and electrolyte balance. Electrolytes like sodium and potassium are technically minerals, and that's where mineralocorticoids get their name from. The main mineralocorticoid is aldosterone. The way that aldosterone affects water and electrolyte balance is by increasing sodium and water reabsorption back into the blood. The more water we have in the blood means the higher the blood volume and the higher our blood volume, the higher our blood pressure. It's also important to know that aldosterone increases the excretion of potassium. So one last time, aldosterone increases sodium and water in the body, which increases blood pressure, and it also decreases potassium in the body. Now let's finally get into dexamethasone. So why did we have to go through all of that information about glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids? It's because dexamethasone is a corticosteroid that actually has both glucocorticoid and mineralocorticoid effects. So it can potentially do all of what we talked about earlier, raising blood glucose levels, anti-inflammation and immunosuppression, increasing sodium and water retention, and increasing potassium excretion so it really helps to understand your gluco and mineralocorticoids. Primarily though, dexamethasone has a much higher glucocorticoid effect than it does mineralocorticoid effect. Some sources even say that it has no mineralocorticoid effect, but many still claim it does have a small amount. This means that dexamethasone is great for stuff like reducing inflammation, but it's not so good at actually retaining much sodium and water. We do, however, need to keep the mineralocorticoid effects in mind for certain populations. For example, not everyone should take dexamethasone if they are already retaining a lot of sodium and water, or if they already have very low potassium levels. So what can we actually use dexamethasone for? Why would we want to reduce inflammation or cause immunosuppression? Well, dexamethasone can be used for a wide variety of inflammatory and immune system conditions, including autoimmune disorders. It can also be used in the treatment of certain forms of meningitis and for severe allergic reactions, for autoimmune disorders like rheumatoid arthritis, ulcerative colitis and multiple sclerosis, and many others. Always be aware of the potential side effects of corticosteroids, like dexamethasone. 
Think back to all of the possible effects of glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids. If we only want one of those effects, the rest are considered potential side effects. So taking high doses of dexamethasone or taking dexamethasone over an extended period of time may result in things like increased blood glucose levels, so be especially careful in diabetic patients. Insulin orders may even need to be increased. Like we mentioned earlier, dexamethasone may cause fluid retention and increased blood pressure from those mineralocorticoid effects. It may also cause abnormally low potassium levels, also known as hypokalemia. With high or long-term doses of corticosteroids, you may even see something called Cushing syndrome. Cushing syndrome presents as weight gain, especially in the face and upper back area. Pink or purple stretch marks, it can cause high blood pressure, and much more. Dexamethasone may increase your susceptibility to infection, especially from wounds. Remember, dexamethasone decreases inflammation, which is a very important stage in wound healing and in the prevention of infection. Corticosteroids can also decrease bone density, which increases the risk for osteoporosis. These are just some of the many possible side effects of dexamethasone and corticosteroids in general. But here are some of the things that we can do to help manage corticosteroid use. Monitor weights daily and assess for signs of edema or swelling. Monitor glucose levels carefully in diabetic patients. If needed, monitor sodium and potassium levels too. Take dexamethasone with food and report any slowed wound healing or signs of infection to the healthcare provider. Do not stop taking dexamethasone abruptly, but instead gradually taper off the dose as instructed by the healthcare provider. Rapid discontinuation can cause an adrenal crisis, which can be life-threatening. All of these things can help ensure that dexamethasone is being used properly and safely. And that's about it for the basics of dexamethasone. It is a very useful drug, but as you saw, it does come with a long list of potential side effects. As with all medications, keep in mind that the potential side effects are always weighed against the potential benefits of the medication. If this video has helped you out, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions or would like me to review a specific drug or topic, please let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.